Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 25th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. WannaCry, of course, turned ransomware into big news, but we still have a regular ransomware going around just like before. We do have a write-up here by Brad for what he calls the Jav ransomware and how it changed recently. Jav actually makes the victim work to get infected. It arrives as a PDF. The victim first has to then agree to open a Word document that's embedded in the PDF and then start word macros the rest is standard technique it then downloads the encryptor and encrypts your file now it's called jav ransomware because that was the extension it used so far but one of the things that changed recently was the extension it's now wlu the ransom also is quite substantial it's a 0.3 bitcoin about which comes down to about 800 dollars not sure if that's just because they're not keeping up with the rise in Bitcoin price, but that's more than you typically see being charged for ransomware. And as usual, Pratt is providing a long list of indicators of compromise. Uh, this particular ransomware is distributed via email and in the samples that he looked at arrived as an invoice. And that's also reflected in the subject of the email. And the commercial OpenVPN access server apparently suffers from a session fixation and HTTP response splitting vulnerability. Now, this is an interesting and very dangerous combination. In itself, session fixation vulnerabilities tend to be difficult to exploit, in particular if a cookie is used to track the session ID, unless there's also an HTTP response splitting vulnerability that can be used to inject headers into the response. And that's exactly what's happening here with the OpenVPN access server. The OpenVPN access server is a web-based admin interface for OpenVPN. And using this vulnerability, it would be possible for an attacker to obtain credentials for this access server. So they could then essentially manipulate OpenVPN sessions. Now, last week, I think it was, I talked about how OpenVPN just went through a pretty good security review and not a lot of problems were found. This particular web-based admin interface was not in scope for this test. They only tested the actual OpenVPN client and server. They did not test this commercial software that is used to administer the OpenVPN server. At this point, there is no patch for this vulnerability. It was originally reported to OpenVPN at the beginning of February. However, you don't really need to give the public access to this admin interface. So simple IP address whitelisting may be a good way to work around this particular problem right now. And over the last few weeks, uh, we have seen a number of very large password dumps being made essentially public for everybody to download or made available for download for not too much money. Now, uh, this really glut of passwords, some of these lists go into the hundreds of millions of accounts, led to an increase in an older attack that's sometimes referred to as credential stuffing. Credential stuffing is really a form of a brute force attack but instead of just trying random usernames and passwords, the attacker will try usernames and passwords that leaked in the past, hoping that some users reused passwords. Some of these uh, credential dumps uh, have email addresses and passwords. So if the user used the same email address to register for your site, then of course, it's pretty obvious to try some of the passwords that were found on other sites. What this really means uh, from a defensive point of view is first of all to be careful about implementing strict controls for brute forcing and not just a limit of attempts per user but also for example limits of attempts per 
her IP address because in these cases, they usually only try a small number of different passwords for each user. Secondly, and I usually don't recommend this, but you probably do want to get a hold of one of these password lists to make sure that none of your users show up in these lists. If a user does show up in this case, I would first of all try the password that they used against internal resources and also let them know that this particular password was leaked. Now, typically as an administrator, you don't really want to know your users' passwords, but I don't really see a big alternative in this case. And also these passwords are essentially already public, so you probably should let them know. Now, there are some sites like, uh, for example, Have I Been Pwned, the very famous site where you can check if your email address shows up in any of these lists, but it doesn't tell you what password showed up, if this was a password that you cared about or not. And uh, overall, these lists have become somewhat useless because pretty much every email address out there is on one of these lists. So yes, one of your passwords has been leaked, but it's not obvious what password has been leaked. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.